Hi, and welcome to the International Young Prophets. I'm so excited to be here with Dr. Melody Hilton again. We are on chapter eight of her book. And again, her book is Higher Living Leadership. Excellent, excellent leadership book. I think everyone should read this and you can get it on amazon.com. And this chapter, we're gonna talk about discovering personal purpose and not just external of success, what we, what we do every day to pay our bills, but the, the personal. So let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, discovering our personal purpose is absolutely imperative for every decision that we make because either I'm gonna live my life out of purpose or I'm just gonna live based upon external demands. And the fact is we know God has put a plan and a purpose on the inside of us. Yeah. And when we tap into what God has placed and uh, in our hearts and called us to do through our lives, then what we do then, we can connect our uh, emotions, we can connect our passions, we can connect uh, our choices. So it really lets me know what to say yes to and what to say wow. no to. Because if something is not my purpose, why do I want to put all my emotional energies into something that I'm not? That's and so, so then I'm not controlled by the external. I'm not controlled by the opinions of man. I'm controlled by what God has placed on the inside of me. And my purpose is so much more than just what I do. Yeah, yeah. I know you've even, just to be personal, you've even helped me walk through some things that maybe that you said, Elizabeth, don't be led by fear in those areas. Not like panicky fear, but like fear because it's not part of your personal purpose. So so that's so good because I can get in an arena and use my energies in a wrong way when God could have something better for me, like perfect for me. You know, it's really frustrating to try to be somebody else. Oh, yeah. So when we are free to know who we are and make our decisions based upon that, we will not live with that frustration. Okay, so when we're talking about personal purpose, I know, you know, we talk about the why, the vision is the what, and our mission is the how. Like um, that, how do we, can you explain that a little yeah, more? We can do a lot of things, but when we can connect the why of our life to the why of a task, then there's going to be a lot of great fulfillment. See, a lot of times we focus on what we're to do rather than why we're doing what we're doing. Mm. And so it's just really connecting our heart to our actions. And if I can't connect my heart to what I'm doing, then I probably shouldn't be doing that. Wow. wow. And I won't do it well. Okay, so so this chapter I love, which I think is a, I mean, well, this whole book is your heart, but let's talk about identity because I feel like sometimes even dealing with leaders, they tell, you know, like we've talked before about self-promotion, like that's really not even the heart of God. God doesn't want that for any of his kids because, and I think that really comes off of not knowing your identity. So let's get into identity and talking about that. Well, I think there's different aspects to identity. First of all, definitely who God says we are. You know, it's sons and daughters of the living God, and we can look at the Word of God, and we can apply every aspect of the Word of God to who He says we are. And that is beautifully foundational, and we need that. But we also need to hear the voice of God, have that rhema word, have that revelation from the Spirit of God, is what is our role? What is our responsibility? Who am I uniquely to my daddy? Uh, you know, you can have you can have someone, they have five kids, six kids, but every child is different and they have a different purpose and a different plan. And as a parent, we want to look at that and help them develop who they are, not treat so all of our children differently. We respond to our children differently. And so I, you know, even as a spiritual mama or as a pastor or as a leader, whatever I do, I've got to look at who that person is and literally shape around them a unique individualized mentorship based upon who they are, not just a cookie cutter. Yeah. Thing. And so when we can see the uniqueness of who we are, then we get rid of comparison. Yeah. Then we get rid of just trying to do things that please somebody else. We become so much more secure in our values. We become more secure in my role, my responsibility, who I am in the kingdom of God and be faithful to that. Yeah. Let me ask you this. You know, we're talking about young leaders 
you know, you have 20 to 45 of our young prophets. So what if in, in and some of them, you know, we talk are reformers mm -hmm. and some of them are pioneers. You know, when you have them, you really don't even have sometimes, I'm not saying everyone here, but I mean, when you look globally, there's going to be a pretty good percentage of people that when you're pioneering, we've never gone this way before. So, so how do you, how do you, in the middle of being different, find out who you are, um, at your identity? Obviously, everything is so biblical. We find who we're supposed to be in that. But there's a part of us that needs to have the skin on. So, what if someone doesn't have a Dr. Melody Hilton in their life, and they are a young leader just in a different country or you know a different part of the world, and maybe they don't emphasize spiritual mothering, fathering, and maybe their parents don't even understand their calling. So what would you tell a young leader on how to come into their fullness of their identity? Uh, I think life is a process. Okay. Uh, what I knew when I was 30 is different from what I knew when I was 35 or 40. It's different from what I knew when I was 50. It was different from what I knew when I was 60. I'm 63. And so when I look at my life every day, is a day of discovery. There is so much, I believe when God put a purpose inside of us, it isn't just for this side of time, it is for all eternity. And so we spend our lives walking out the uniqueness of who we are, discovering more and more every day what God has placed on the inside of us. And so I think one of the greatest things you can do like right now today is give your 100% today. Do wow. what you know to do today. Be obedient to God today. Uh, manage your thoughts and your emotions today. Feed on the things of the Spirit today. You know, inquire of the Lord today. And when we give our 100% today, it positions us for what we don't yet know. Yeah. And we are on a journey. There's going to be things you're going to discover about yourself in the next year or two years that you'll go, wow, if I would have realized that when I was 20. Yeah. And um, we can't go back and change, but it's so powerful to recognize uh, that we are a work in progress. My grandson, he is such a knowledge-based person. And one day I said to him uh, at 10 years old, uh, do you realize there's things you don't know? And he goes, there is? In his mind at 10 years old, he like knows everything. Yeah. And so sometimes we look at our life today and we feel like we have to know everything today. Yeah. Rather than just being faithful to God today, loving today, loving the moment, loving the people in our life, not focusing on what we don't have, focusing on what we do have. And when we're faithful to what is in our hand, when we're faithful to release our voice, when we're faithful uh, to honor our God today, then we are positioned to know so much more tomorrow. So so say there are young leaders out there that are watching this and maybe like, I love that, I love that, but maybe let's go back a little earlier step. They are like, you know, I'm a pioneer, God's given me a purpose. You know, how do I, how do I just feel comfortable in my earth suit? How do I feel comfortable in who I am? How do I feel comfortable and move forward in pioneering? I mean, I, I mean, I was young and now I'm old, but yeah, like right. I, uh, <laughs> but now I, I, and I still have that challenge sometimes when I'm pioneer where I have question marks and, or, you know, I think people that have previous, you know, experience sometimes tried to put on the Saul suit on David on me sometimes. So, so really like, and it doesn't mean they're mean. It doesn't mean any of that. If anything, how awesome they would even try to help you. But, uh, you know, at the same time, how do you be you trying to pioneer and you don't even know where you're going other than you heard the voice of God? Well, when I have all those answers, I'll let you know. <laughs> Uh, because the fact is, I'm still discovering. And whenever I step out to pioneer something new, I need a lot of courage because I'm going so somewhere I have no experiential reality for. I'm moving forward in into an adventure that I've never walked in before. 
But what's so powerful that, about that is if I know I've given my 100%. You know, one thing about Daniel, he had an excellent spirit. Yeah. He gave his best. And he didn't know what was going to happen six months or a year down the road. He just gave his best. He was excellent in what he did. And I think if we're excellent in character, I think if we have a heart to honor our God and we just take those risks, step out, recognize we will probably fail in the process. And see, one of our biggest fears or the things we're insecure about is what if we fail? The fact is we will fail. Mm. And sometimes I learn more about me from my failures because when I do things right, I can think, wow, look what I just did. That's really awesome. And I, want, I have to be careful because my successes can bring pride if mm. I don't recognize who's the one who brought the success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My failures, we got to be careful that it doesn't bring shame, but I learn more from my failures. I've failed in things when I stepped out to do what man expected me to do, Saul's armor. Yeah. And I've got to recognize I can't be another. I can't uh, conform myself to somebody else's image. I've got to discover mine. I learn from others. I learn from their character. I learn from their maturity. I learn from their wisdom. I learn from their life experiences, but I'm not them. Yeah. And when I lead people, I don't try to conform them to melody. I try to find what's in them to help them walk that out. But you know, when you're a pioneer and you're stepping out with a voice, when you're stepping out with a passion that's God put inside of your heart, it's not going to go all smoothly, but that's okay because in the process, you'll discover you. And I want to say there's three things that help you to discover your purpose. And I think it's so important that we talk about that before we close. Number one is what do you do well? What do you do naturally well? What is so easy for you to do? What are the skills that you have that where people come up to you and say, you are so good at this and you go, I am? You know, you might not even see what you carry. Like focus on what people are validating you in and really giving you genuine feedback about what you carry. Think about the things that you do so naturally that you don't even have to think hard to do them. You just do them because it's naturally you. Think about what you dreamed about when you were a little girl or a little boy. Those are all things, uh, skills and abilities that have been placed on the inside of you by God. Then secondly, think about your passions. Think about the things that make you angry. <laughs> when good. I look at injustice, it makes me angry. So it's a very clear indication for me that justice is a passion of my heart. Yeah. And so I recognize that's one of the driving whys behind all my skills by what I do and how I do it. My driving force is my passion for justice. So what is the thing that makes you angry? Because what makes you angry is what is motivating you to be the solution. And so, you know, look at that passion. Look at the thing that gets you excited. What's the thing that makes you laugh? What's the thing that makes you cry? What is the thing you're very opinionated about? Yeah, yeah, Those yeah. are the passions. Those are like the driving force. And then lastly, think about your target group. For me, it's leaders. Yeah. For me, it's those that uh, are reformers, are world changers. Uh, I want to invest into everyone, but those that I'll pay a price for are the ones who want to change their world, yeah. ones that are catalysts for positive change, ones that are rescuing from error and returning to a rightful course, ones that are willing to pay a price to advance and increase in the call of God upon their lives. And I know that's my target group. So I take my skills that God has given me and I work on developing because the skills you have, we have to take responsibility to develop them. So I'll work on developing my skills. I'm motivated by my passion, my purpose, and I recognize who God has called me to impact. You know, I love that. And it's it's really, let's use the word steward. You're stewarding the gifts and the calling. And so God gives you more when you when you steward those correctly. Perfect. So thank you, Dr. Melody. We love this one. It was just such a great chapter on personal purpose. And so we'll see you next time.